What's up, golf fans? It's your boy Scott, aka Boutique PGA, on Twitter. Here to bring you another edition of Under Par, presented by the Fantasy Boutique. If you're not familiar with Under Par, I'm here to give you a recap of last week's event, which happened to be the Valspar Championship. I'm also going to give you a small breakdown of this week's event, the Arnold Palmer Invitational, and give you my 4x4 four four plays. My 4x4 four four is four golfers who will make up a portion of my core player pool uh, for DFS lineup construction on FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, also give four golfers whom I feel are flying under the radar in good form or whose skill set I feel set them up this week uh, for the event at Bay Hill. Um, this is just the tip of the iceberg for content provided by uh, Fantasy Boutique. Head over to DFSBoutique.com now. Sign up for our PGA Season Pass, which gets you access to our statistical spreadsheet. Course and tournament overview and breakdown, um, a historical whole by whole breakdown um, for each course or for the each course over the last ten or so years. Um, odds versus pricing model, course and current form sheets, uh, weekly GPP and cash rankings, and a more in depth look into my player pool and golfer write up. Um, live PGA pre lock show and an invite to our chat. Uh, which has been buzzing the last few days. Um, first up, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Uh, please like and share this video. Subscribe to the Fantasy Boutique YouTube page. Get up to date on all the NASCAR and uh, PGA content. Um, give us a follow on Twitter, DFS Boutique and Boutique PGA. Um, in my weekly recap over at DFSBoutique.com, uh, I mentioned that I felt like Marty McFly hopping into the DeLorean uh, in Back to the Future the past few weeks watching the PGA Tour. Um, last week, Phil Mickelson picked up his first victory in almost five years at the WGC Mexico. Um, Tiger's back playing, um, striking fear in his fellow golfers. And this week, Paul Casey actually won a freaking tournament. Um, his first since 2009, it's like a span of 140 tournaments. He's got a couple dozen top 10s mixed in and like 75 top 25s in that span. Um, the only thing that could probably top all this off would be a Sunday final in a couple weeks at Augusta, Augusta with Phil and, uh, Phil and Tiger fighting over the green jacket. Um, Paul Casey shot a final round 65. Um, the edge Tiger Woods and Patrick Reed by one shot to win the Valspar Championship at minus 10 um, and claim the Golden Paintbrush Trophy. If you haven't checked it out, uh, go Google it. It's actually a pretty cool-looking trophy. Um, Third-round leader, or three-round leader, Corey Connors folded like I kind of figured he would. Um, it was a nice story, but he just wasn't winning this tournament. I made mention in our chat group over at uh, – DFSBoutique.com that heading into the start of the final round, I kind of figured that the winner was going to be either Justin Rose or Tiger Woods. Um, Corey Connors had no previous experience playing on a Sunday with Tiger breathing down his neck. Um, Brent Snedeker, who was also in the hunt, um, they had made mention that he had been previously paired with Tiger, I think 11 or 12 times before, and he's never shot um, around lower than Tiger when he's paired with him. So it kind of threw him out of the mix. And I kind of figured unless somebody that was a few shots back um, made a charge, you know, somebody like a Patrick Reed or Sergio Garcia, I just figured that it was going to be um, Justin Rose or Tiger Woods winning. Um, Paul Casey's a borderline elite golfer. Um, you know, he never crossed my mind just simply because he doesn't win tournaments. It's just his his knack, he, you know, makes the cut, finishes top 10, finishes top 25, but he just doesn't win tournaments. Um, but he finally got that monkey off the back, off his back. Congrats, Paul. You deserved it. Um, you know, Tiger just could never string together anything in that final round. Um, he mustered two birdies and one bogey on, on Sunday. Um, 
Let me get a shout out to uh, our boy Graham over at DFS Boutique. Um, he parlayed Tiger and Justin Rose, along with a couple other low owned guys and cash pretty nicely. I think he brought in close to $2,000. Um, as for my picks, um, if you watched the show last week, uh, you know that I mentioned Jordan Spieth, who, just like everybody else in the DFS community, we didn't see a miscut coming from Spieth after um, the course history that he had had at Innisbrook. Uh, but overall, my picks did pretty decently. I mentioned Tiger. Obviously, he finished second. Uh, I mentioned Adam Hadwin, um, the defending champion. He just couldn't string together, you know, four rounds of golf or couldn't go low on any one of those four rounds, but he still managed the top 12 finish. Um, Steve Stricker, like I mentioned, can still hang with this young group of, uh, of golfers. Finished uh, T12. And lastly, Luke List um, continued his strong stretch of uh, golf um, in the last three or four tournaments and finished uh, top 16. Uh, this week, the golfers are heading 100 miles inland from Tampa to Orlando, Florida for the Arnold Palmer Invitational. Um, for DFS purposes, expect a higher percentage of lineups um, as you head into Saturday and Sunday that are going to have six golfers. Why is that, you might ask? Well, the Honor Palmer Invitational is just that, an invitational tournament. So the field gets cut to 120 golfers compared to a normal tour event, which is you know, between 100 and 150 and 155. But you have the same cut rules that apply to top 70. Um, and ties still make the cut after the second round. So pick wisely as there's an outside chance that just because you have six or six golfers heading into the weekend, you still might not cash. Um, the Bay Hill course, where the Arnold Palmer Invitational is played, is a par 72 course that plays just over 7,400 yards. Um, it has a bunch of long par fours that stretch over 450 yards. Um, it also has a couple par fours that play under 300 yards, but they're strategically laid out so that you're going to have to lay up off the tee. You can't really, you know, go bombs away and leave yourself with a short approach shot. Um, so as this is a long golf course, you're going to see um, a lot of approach shots over 200 yards. Um, in fact, roughly 30% of all your approach shots are going to be from 200 yards or out. Um, so in order to make moves on this golf course, you got to score on the par fives. Uh, let me pull up a, a little stat here. Um, you know, just how important are the par fives at the Arnold Palmer Invitational? Um, since 2010, so that's eight tournaments, there have been 5,100 birdies or better on the par fives and only 1,300 uh, bogeys or worse. So you're typically going to see on any given year anywhere between 48 and 50% of all the birdies on the course are going to occur on those four par five holes. Um, you know, for comparison's sake, the par fours count for roughly – you know, 38 to 40 percent of the birdies and the par threes, um, the remaining like 10 or so percent. Um, you know, from 2000, uh, 2010 to 2014, it played between the eighth and the 12th toughest tour on course. Um, you know, scoring was a little bit more favorable in 2015 and 2016. It ranked like the middle of the pack between 28th and 35th hardest course on tour. Um, but then last year, it kind of went back to normal and, and it ranked as the ninth toughest. Um, the fairways at Bay Hill are pretty easy to hit, but that could be due to the fact that it's viewed as a less than driver course. The average driving distance is less than 280 yards. So the golfers are going to leave the driver in the bag most times on most holes. Um, the course is littered with bunkers, 85 of them to be exact. Water comes into play on nine holes. 
Um, the greens are average size and easy to hit by tour standards. Um, once you're on the greens, though, things get a little funky. Uh, they are usually pretty fast uh, moving, running anywhere between uh, 12 and 12 and a half on the stint meter. Um, key stats I'm looking for this week, strokes gained tee to green, strokes gained ball striking, strokes gained putting, as historically, really good putters tend to do well at this course. Um, scrambling, par five scoring or birdie or better. And then overall birdie or better percentage and bogey avoidance. If you want to get a little bit more in depth, you can take a look at birdie or better percentages from 200, yard, 200 yards and out. And par three efficiency between 200 and 225 yards as the four par threes that are on this course all measure um, between 200 and 230 yards. As for my core plays this week, once again, these will be guys who make up a portion of my core player pool um, for line of construction on FanDuel and DraftKings. Um, you know, once again, these are just a few of the plays. Head over to DFSBoutique.com, sign up for the PGA season pass, and you can get a little bit more in-depth um, look at my expanded player pool. Uh, but the first golfer is Ricky Fowler. He's 11,800 on FanDuel, 10,300 on DraftKings, odds to win a tournament, 22 to 1. Um, I'm pretty much betting the house this week that Ricky doesn't miss the cut for the third time in five tournaments. He's just too good of a golfer to, to you know, have a stretch like this. Um, if he does miss the tournament or miss the cut, there's something seriously wrong either um, with his game or possibly his head. It could be the, you know, the new girlfriend taking his, his mind off the golf course. You know, whatever it is, I don't expect him to miss the cut this week. Um, he had a below, a below average finish at the WGC Mexico a couple weeks ago with a 37th place finish. Um, he's got decent course history here. He has a 12th place, 12th place finish last year. And, um, you know, in the last six tournaments at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, he's made the cut five times. And he's got a third place finish in 2013. Um, he's priced pretty appropriately on FanDuel and DraftKings as he has a negative two rating in our odds versus pricing model. So, you know, he's, you know, priced slightly above where, or rank, uh, yeah, priced slightly above where he should be. Um, but it's nothing to, you know, get crazy about or reason to, to fade him. Um, stats for Ricky Fowler, bogey avoidance in the field. He ranks third. Um, he ranks sixth in par four scoring, 10th in scramb scrambling, 14th in par three efficiency between 200 and 225 yards. He's 21st in strokes gained tee to green and birdie or better percentage. And he ranks 23rd in strokes gained ball striking. Um, the next guy is Zach Johnson. He is 10,200 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament at 66 to 1. I'm just going to put it out there. I love Zach Johnson in both formats, GPP and cash this week. Um, he always seems to be a guy that garners lower ownership than he probably deserves except for when he shows up at the John Deere Classic, you know, the middle of the summer or so. Um, but with him being priced only 7,700 on DraftKings, I kind of think he might, you might see a bump in his ownership. Um, he's coming off a 16th place finish at the Valspar. He's made all seven cuts um, that he's appeared in in the 2018 PGA Tour season. And he's made 11 of 12 cuts at the Arnold Palmer Invitational dating back to 2006. Three top 10s, four top 20 finishes in that span. Um, he's pretty appropriately priced on both sites. He's got a slight negative four rating on FanDuel, but he's got a plus two rating on DraftKings and our odds versus pricing model. Stats for Zach Johnson, he's second in the field bogey avoidance. He's fourth in scrambling. He's eighth in par four scoring. He's 10th in par four birdie or better. He's 13th in par five scoring. He's 14th in birdie or better percentage. And then he's 18th in both strokes gained tee to green and strokes gained ball striking. So like I mentioned, he's a really good scorer on the par fives. 
And he can also handle his own on the par fours, where typically, um, if you look at the historical breakdown, um, most years, every hole outside the par fives play over par um, on average. There might be, you know, a few years where there's one or possibly on a rare occasion, two holes um, that play under par. So I really like Zach Johnson this week. Third golfer is Kevin Chappell. He is 10,000 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament at 75 to 1. Um, kind of expecting Chappell to be one of the more popular plays on DraftKings this week because of his price. Much like Zach Johnson, he's, I think it's almost borderline criminal that these two guys are ranked as or priced as low as they are. Um, but he's still going to be in my core, anyways. As always, to get ownership leverage, um, you know, on a golfer, whether it's, you know, if you're playing a high priced guy like Tiger Woods or Ricky Fowler or Jason Day, um, I just find a pivot at another price point um, to, you know, kind of gain that, uh, that ownership angle in GPP. So that's probably what I'm going to do um, with Kevin Chappell. Um, Chappie's made four of six cuts at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, um, career best second here last year. Um, he, he's kind of a guy where if you run your models or you look at your, you know, statistics or whatever, um, if Jason Day kind of pops on a course, um, chances are that Kevin Chappell is going to do as well. They're very similar have very similar skill sets. Um, Jason Day is just uh, a little bit more of an elite golfer. Um, but back to Chapel, he's got two other top 25 finishes in his career at the Arnold Palmer Invitational. He's made seven of eight cuts on the year, uh, three top 20 finishes in his last five events. He's a better play on DraftKings, where he has a plus 14 rating odds versus pricing compared to a minus nine on FanDuel. Um, and it, that kind of seems like a common theme when I'm running the odds versus pricing model. Guys that seem to be underpriced on DraftKings seem to be a little overpriced on FanDuel and vice versa. Uh, stats for Chapel, he's fifth in the field, strokes gain, ball striking. He's sixth in birdie better 200 plus from 200 plus yards. He's seventh in both par four birdie or better percentage and par four scoring. He's ninth in strokes gain tee to green, 16th in scrambling, 17th in par five scoring, 18th in bogey avoidance, and 20th in birdie or better percentage. Um, the last golfer in my core group is Kevin Kisner. He's 9,800 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DraftKings. Odds to win the tournament at 75 to 1. And just like Zach Johnson and Kevin Chappell, he's another guy that just seems severely underpriced on DraftKings. Um, you know, it could just be DraftKings, you know, knowing something and pricing that low to get people onto him. And he proceeds to go out and miss the cut. You know, it's DFS, so it's a gamble. Um, he's made two or three cuts at the API. The second place finish last year. His current form's a little bit shaky, which might be why his um, DraftKings price is a little low. Um, he's missed the cut in two of his last three events. <clears throat> and the one made cut was WGC Mexico, where there is no cut. So did he really make the cut or not? You know, that's up to you for interpretation. Um, outside of that, um, it's been over two months since he's posted a top 25 finish at any event. Um, he has a plus 32 rating, though, on DK in our odds versus pricing model compared to a minus 7 ranking rating on FanDuel. Um, stats for Kisner, he's fourth in the field, strokes gain putting. Like I mentioned, um, there seems to be a high correlation that if you're a good putter, um, overall, you have success at Bay Hill. He's fifth in par 3 um, efficiency between 200 and 225 yards. He's 10th in birdie or better percentage, as well as 10th in par 5 birdie or better percentage. He's as well 10th in par 4 scoring, 11th in par or birdie or better from 200 yards out, 12th in par 4 birdie or better percentage, and 18th in par 5 scoring. 
Um, the next group of guys are my value plays, value targets, however you want to look at them. Um, guys that I think are flying under the radar, have good form, um, or whose skill sets I feel fit Bay Hill this coming week. Um, there are going to be guys that um, I use as tertiary plays with my core lineup, um, just to, or my core plays just to build lineups. The first guy is Jason Kokrak. He's 9,500 on FanDuel, 8,000 on DraftKings. Odds to win a tournament at 55 to 1. Um, Kokrak's one of those guys that's coming in with both really good current form and course history. Um, he's made six straight cuts in the last two months. Um, he's got three top 20 finishes. His current form is, like I said, just as good. He's uh, made four or five cuts at the API. And he's got three top 20 finishes in the last four years. Um, that loan year was last year where he finished 56. He's a slightly better play on FanDuel than DraftKings where he was a plus nine rating um, versus a plus two rating on DraftKings and our odds versus pricing. But he's still a good play either way on both sites. Um, stats for Kokrak, he's third in the field, par five scoring, fourth in par five birdie or better percentage, sixth in bogey avoidance. He's seventh in birdie or better percentage from 200 plus yards. He's 17th in scrambling, 19th in birdie or better percentage, and he's 22nd in par four scoring. So like I mentioned, he's able to um, take advantage of the par fives with his, his scoring numbers. Um, he's really good from 200 plus yards out, and he doesn't make uh, bogeys. You know, so all in all, I expect him to do a lot of scoring this week and rack up a lot of uh, FanDuel and DraftKings points. Uh, the next golfer is Emiliano Grio. He is 9,000 on FanDuel, 7,600 on DraftKings, odds to win the tournament at 66 to 1. Now, I'm going to be quite honest with you. He played last week at the Hero, um, Hero Indian Open over in India, so I'm a little concerned about the, um, you know, halfway around the uh, world flight from India to Florida. But he's coming in with a really, really good stretch of runs. He's got three top 20 or top 12 finishes in his last four events. Um, and that includes a sixth place finish last week uh, over in India. Um, he's, he couples that with two made cuts in his only two appearances at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, um, a seventh and a 17th place finish. So I'm really liking Grio this week. He has a plus six rating on DraftKings and a plus 19 rating on FanDuel um, in our odds versus pricing model. Stats for Grio, he's 13th in the field, strokes game putting. He's 13th in proximity, um, 200 yards plus. He's 13th in par three efficiency, 200 to 225 yards. He's 17th in strokes game ball striking, and he's 21st in bogey avoidance. Um, the third golfer in my value target is Sam Burns. He's $9,000 on DraftKings, $7,200 on DraftKings, or $9,000 on FanDuel, $7,200 on DraftKings, odds to win a tournament at 100 to 1. Um, Burns has been playing really good golf um, over his last, I think, three tournaments. Um, he finished second um, in his last web.com tour event, and then he's got an eighth place finish um, last week or at the Honda Classic and then he has a 12th place finish last week at the Valspar. Um, we don't want to remind anybody of this but at the Honda Classic he was paired with Tiger Woods in the final round and actually bested him. He shot a 68, Tiger shot a 70. So clearly he wasn't um, you know phased by all of the, the Tiger mania that was, you know, taking place in the course. If he continues playing like this, he can pretty much forget about the web.com um, tour and he's going to, you know, earn his PGA Tour card. Um, he owns a plus four rating on FanDuel, plus 16 rating on DraftKings. So if you're you're looking at that, um, he's, he's a, a better play on DraftKings, but still a good play as well on FanDuel. Um, stats for Burns, he's second in the field, strokes gain putting, 12th, birdie or better from 200 plus yards, and he's 15th in par five scoring. So 
you know, just like Jason Kokrak and a few other guys I mentioned, really good putter, able to score on the par fives, good from 200 plus yards out. All things that I'm looking for this week as I um, dig into uh, researching these players a little bit more. The last player in my uh, value plays is Brandon Harkin. He's 8,100 on FanDuel, 6,900 on DraftKings, odds to win a tournament, 200 to 1. He's making his first appearance at the Arnold Palmer Invitational, uh, which could be a problem since he, you know, has never played the course. He doesn't have the knowledge, um, you know, from playing the course as many times as, you know, say a Charles Howe or a, a Zach Johnson. Um, but he's been playing solid golf this year. He's made nine of 12 cuts. Um, only five of, he's made five of seven over the last two months. He's coming off a missed cut at the Valspar, but he's got four top 25 finishes in his last, in those seven events in the last two months. Um, he owns a positive rating on both FanDuel and DK in our odds versus pricing model. And, you know, he's one of the few guys that you can say that about, because like I mentioned earlier, um, you know, guys that are value plays on DraftKings don't seem to be value plays on FanDuel and vice versa. Um, if there's one thing that Brandon Harkins can do, it's score on the par fives. Um, in fact, he leads the field in Eagles by a large margin um, with 10. Um, so I expect him to have plenty of Eagle opportunities. And if you look at the average of this course um, since 2010, it pretty much averages roughly 35 eagles per year um, across the all four rounds. If you shorten that gap from 2013 to 2017, it averages 39 eagles. So um, I'm expecting him to just potentially tear apart these par fives. Um, is there a chance that he struggles the rest of the course? Yes, but if he's giving himself scoring opportunities on the par fives, he has a chance to make in a cut. And, you know, with his price at 6,900 on DraftKings, um, 8,100 on FanDuel, he's probably going to be one of the lowest priced guys um, in your lineup. So just making the cut and having the potential of a top 25 finish and earning those um, placement points is going to be huge. Stats for Harkins, he's 11th in field, par 5 scoring. He's 15th in birdie or better from 200-plus yards out. And he's 17th in strokes gained putting. Once again, my core plays, Ricky Fowler, Zach Johnson, Kevin Chappell, and Kevin Kisner. My value targets, Jason Kokrak, Emiliano Grio, uh, Sam Burns, and Brandon Harkins. Um, I can't reiterate enough uh, what a good time it is to become a member of the Fantasy Boutique. NASCAR, PGA are both in full gear. Um, like I mentioned, we had somebody won $2,000 on PGA last week. Um, another member, Alex, who just happens to be our NHL guru, almost took down the $12 single entry in NASCAR last week and walked away with over $400. The NASCAR Savant J, a.k.a. Maddie Machine Gun, um, is quite literally the GOAT when it comes to NASCAR. Um, you know, you see a lot of these, you know, big name sites, you know, touting that, you know, they're, you know, the NASCAR king. Um, but quite literally, J is the GOAT when it comes to NASCAR. Um, he combines his 30 plus years of NASCAR um, experience and knowledge um, makes a huge ROI each and every week playing NASCAR. Uh, once again, head over to dfsboutique.com to get into our PGA and NASCAR packages. They're both $69.99 each. Um, they get you access for the rest of the 2018 season. Not comfortable with the $69.99 package? Give us a weekly try for just $10. Uh, we're sure you won't regret it. Um, fantasy Boutique, tailor your game like a winner. Daily fantasy sports de designed by winners. Uh, once again, give this uh, video a like. 
Subscribe to get notified of all the new Fantasy Boutique content. And lastly, share, share, share. Um, I think you're, I thank you all for watching under par. Um, we will see you again in a few weeks at the Houston Open as we prep for Augusta. I'm not sure the situation with um, the DFS playing next week. Uh, they have the WGC um, match play event, so they can't do um, daily fantasy sports for that. There is a um, an event in Putacana, Mexico, which is going to draw you know a lot of the lesser known guys from the tour, um, as well as the Web.com tour, similar to the Puerto Rico Open last year. So I'm not sure. Um, if the sites are going to roll out, um, you know, DFS golf or not. But until then, I'll catch you guys later. Best of luck this week. Um, hope that, you know, any insight or knowledge that I've been able to give you guys um, makes you a profitable week. And hope to see you guys signing up and joining uh, the Fantasy Boutique. I'll talk to you later. Thank <laughs> you.